Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy Praise the Lord. Amen. We have the same colonial background, and I know sometimes you guys can be very British. I said, Praise the Lord. Amen. Again, that sounds more like Africa. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We ask that you will glorify yourself in this meeting. You will take absolute control of my vocal cords. That I will not make utterances that are coming from the flesh. But I will speak as you will grant me utterance. I stand to represent you and to testify about your goodness. I will not misrepresent you. Anything, O oh God, that will be offensive to you will not proceed out of these lips of clay. I declare that your people, O oh God, will receive your word and it will miss with faith. And as they run with it, they will have enduring and lasting results. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. By the grace of God, I want to share with you briefly on what I have titled The God Factor in Business and Life. I have listened to, by the grace of God, the National Patriot, Dr. Gary, and all he has said and we have heard about his testimony. I'm excited that finally I have met him one-on-one. -on -one. And I want to thank all the bishops and everyone that are here. I want to celebrate the privilege to be given opportunity to share with you. Uh, my prayer is that for many of us, obviously you are seeing me for the first time. We don't know how God will do it. You may or may not see me again. But my desire is that I will leave you with a word that you will never forget. That's not going to be by my strength, but the spirit of grace that has helped me in life. I am trusting that same spirit to implant a word in your spirit that you will fire you on until you see Christ in glory, in Jesus' name. I have a little desire tonight to redefine business, my own idea of business. If I'm talking to businessmen and women, people who are actively engaged either in the secular or in the private sector or in government or doing something for themselves, Everybody is a businessman or woman. As long as you are alive, there's something you are doing. And whatever it is, whether you are a home engineer, according to Dr. Gary, you are a business person. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so business is the opportunity given to you to preach Christ by other means. It is a platform given to you in order to occupy till he comes. It is a platform to express your gifts and talent. It's a platform to be used for the demonstration of the principles and powers of the kingdom. Business is a platform also to be used for the demonstration of the grace of God upon you and the superiority of the covenant that you have with God. You are not an ordinary person. Will you help me tonight to prophesy to yourself, put your hand here, say, I am not an ordinary person. Say that very prophetically tonight. Even if you don't believe it, I believe it. As long as you are born again, you are not an ordinary person. You are not just a human being. You are a spirit being mastering the human experience. So you are not an ordinary person. There is something about you that is different. And that is what God wants you to go and showcase out there. That you are not ordinary. Because you are not ordinary, you are not supposed to compete with unbelievers and lose anything in life. You are not ordinary because there is something different about you. You operate both in the natural and in the spirit realm. You can truly determine what happens in the daytime, in the place of prayer at night. So you are not ordinary. You can cut forth the things that are not as though they are. And they will be bettered by the dawn of the day. One more time, say I'm not ordinary. I'm not ordinary. Oh, come on, you're afraid to say that. You are not ordinary in Jesus' name. 
And so business provides a platform for you to demonstrate the grace of God upon you and the superiority of the covenant that you have with God. It is a platform to showcase your creativity to the glory of God. It's also a platform to a platform for divine partnership. It's a platform God has given to you so that God himself will pour himself into you and you in turn the process that we emanate as a result of his empowerment, you will in turn bring that back into his kingdom to support his kingdom. And so business is a divine partnership you enter with God so that you can work with God. And God will pour grace. He will give you creativity. He will give you everything you need to succeed. And when you would have succeeded, he will cause you to remember that it is he who gave you the power to create wealth. And what is it designed for? It's not just for your pleasure. It is designed that you will bring back the proceeds to support the kingdom. And so that the kingdom of God can move forward. So that there will be pronounced furtherance of the kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. And so business also is a platform for you to showcase integrity and righteousness. And permit me to say that business is a platform for soul winning. There are people you will never meet in life. And the only place God has arranged that you must meet them and preach to them is in the place of business. Are you listening to me? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so I will give you my own definition of what business is. There is a man, an American Jew, that was said to be very successful. Highly successful. And one day a journalist met him and said, Sir, you are so successful in business and in life. Can you tell us the secret of your success? The man asked, he said, truthfully, you want to know? He said, yes, I want to know. He said, well, I have worked very hard. And so the journalist thought that was the entire secret. He paused a little, then he added the statement. He said, but don't forget, I am a Jew. Now, when I heard that testimony, he said, don't do what? Don't forget I'm a Jew. Can we repeat that together? I want to go. Don't forget I'm a Jew. Oh, come on. Encourage me. In Nigeria, we talk back to pastors. Encourage me. Don't forget I'm a Jew. Don't forget I'm a Jew. And so the rich man, Jewish man, the American Jew, said to this journalist, I worked so hard, but the most important thing is that don't forget I'm a Jew. So when I heard that statement, I became curious. I said, God... What is this man talking about? And there are some things you hear on the platform of, you know, mainstream media, on the platform of everyday discourse that don't leave your spirit until it resonates with its scripture. And so I became curious. I wanted to know, what is it about a Jew? Why did this man say, don't forget I'm a Jew? The first thing that came to mind was to give it some kind of social networking extrapolation. To say, okay, Jews know how to network, which is part of the reason why this fellowship is also in place. You know, to network and do things together and patronize ourselves and do stuff together. But that was not what the Lord used that man to say. Let me tell you. As I was looking for scripture, a scripture popped up. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Romans chapter 3. I want to read from verse 1 to 2. The Bible says, what Then what is the advantage of the Jew? Or what is the benefit of circumcision? In the Amplified Version puts it this way, great in every respect. To begin with, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God, his very words. And let me read it again from another translation, the New Living Translation. Then what is the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value in the ceremony of circumcision? Yes, there are great benefits. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of God. And I read again from the, the complete Jewish Bible. Please, you know, it says, please receive the law and instruction. Sorry. That's another scripture. 
And so when I read this scripture, the Bible says, what is it about a Jew? He said, much in every way. What is the benefit of being a Jew? He said, much in every way because unto him is committed the oracles of God. That is the very word of God. The first advantage you have tonight, brethren, as a believer who is in the marketplace, is to understand that if you know how to extract his word from his mouth, no one can stop you. If you know how to go into the closet and extract his word from his mouth, you are unstoppable. If you know how to interact with him or fellowship with him, no one can disturb your progress. I will share a brief testimony. I may not be able to tell you all my testimonies, but I will admittedly share testimonies within the limit of time I have. I remember when I was starting business, not too much I have done, and I was to obtain a performance bond in order to get a, an advance payment, you know, to be able to prosecute a contract, a big contract. And I was to go to this insurance company after applying, and all of a sudden, my paperwork had got into a very advanced stage, and the chief legal officer of the insurance company decided to be funny. You know, one of the problems you deal with in Africa is corruption. But I know KI is not like that. KI is good. <laughs> and so this guy insisted that he was, he was not going to release the paper until he met with me and until we agreed terms. I said, I'm going to get a bond. Why do I have to give you money? But the gentleman insisted because of time, brethren. I sat in his front. And I was saying, sir, could you please release this document? Because if you don't sign this paper today, the person to release the money is traveling, and in another three weeks, is not back. And so the project will be delayed. I will be in trouble. And the guy said he was not going to release the paper. And I sat in his phone. I said, please, will you release the paper? And all of a sudden, something within me kicked, like the baby will kick in the womb of the mother. Something within me kicked and it was an awakening of the fact that I'm not an ordinary person. And all of a sudden, I says, I kept quiet for a while. And all of a sudden, I started speaking in tongues. Initially, it was quiet. And all of a sudden, it became violent and audible. And I looked into his eyes. He looked at me where the only two people in the office. He looked at me and I looked at him. And I was speaking in violent tongues. And finally, he said, what did you say? I said, sign that paper. <laughs> and he signed. And I took my paper and walked away. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not ordinary. Tell somebody you are not ordinary. <laughs> God wants to, want you to take your total being to the marketplace. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Once upon a time, one of the biggest jobs I had in my early days, it was in tens of millions of Nigerian Naira, not now that our currency is weak. And I was to attend this interview, an engineering job. And we had several contractors, very well qualified, big brands that contested. And I was to face a several month panelist. And as I got there, and all of a sudden I realized, except God will intervene, I didn't have a chance. And guess what? The, 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 the project had, you know, almost a 65 year old consultant who is so strict and very nasty. Excuse me. And I was to face this panel. And I said, God, everyone was going in. And for some reason, God allowed it. I was the last person. My company was the last person to be called in. And I was to be interviewed. And the interview was to range from the technical to the commercial. First of all, you have to prove and demonstrate that you have the technical competence to do the job. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, when it was time for me, I had prayed. All the while, people were going and coming out. I was praying in the spirit. And as I walked into that room, one of the prayers I prayed, I said, God, I carry an aroma in the presence of God. 
And as I step into that room, I change the atmosphere. I rearrange the agenda. They will follow me, not me following them. And guess what happened, brethren? As soon as I walked in, and they engaged me, said, what's your name? And I asked after a few questions. And the next thing they wanted to go into the very technical area that probably I am not too sure if I would have been able to deal with that exhaustively well. But guess what? They asked me one question. I took them from my area of weakness and I took them to my area of strength. Amen. And I started talking to them about my area of strength. I started talking to them about something about the project, but that's my area of strength. Before you knew it, at the time we finished, they said to me, how much do you want to be paid? And I told them how much this kind I could give to them. And guess what happened? When it was time for the job to be awarded, the panel said, on the grounds of technical competence, <laughs> they were awarding my company the job. Oh, One more time, tell yourself I'm not ordinary. Oh, Say that very well. Oh, you are not ordinary. Because there is something that, let me tell you, if grace cannot come in to bridge the gap, why do you serve God? If you must be as competent as those who don't know God, why do you serve God? I am not advocating mediocrity here. What, what I'm saying is that when you have done all, there is something else to stand on. And that is the platform of grace. Are you listening to me? Praise the name of the Lord. And so this guy said, don't forget I am a Jew. And what is it about a Jew? The Bible says much in every way. Not just in selected areas. In every way. Why? Because unto him is committed the oracles of the living God. Now how many of us have heard about the ark of God? The ark of God contained nothing other than a box that had two stones. And what is in the stones is the word of God as it was given to Moses. And you and I know that whenever Israel was in serious trouble, they had a tough enemy to deal with. What would they do? They take the ark of God to the battleground. And each time they took the ark there, especially when they are not in disobedience, the Bible records that Israel had upper hand. Is that correct? And so what I'm asking you to do as you go about life, learn to take the ark with you. Are you listening to me? Because that's what gives you an edge. That's what makes you different from others. That's what the enemy will see and cannot stand. And the Bible says the Jew unto him is committed the oracle of God. The word of God himself. And trust me, brethren, the Bible says in Job chapter 22, verse 22, Job 22, 22, the Amplified Version puts it this way. He said, please receive the law and instruction from his mouth and establish his words in your heart and keep them. The con contemporary Jewish Bible puts it this way. He said, please receive instruction from his mouth and take his words to heart. Praise the name of the Lord. And so praise the name of the Lord. And so what do you do? When you wake up in the morning, go to the presence of God to stay in his presence and receive a word from him. Ladies and gentlemen, one guided instruction from heaven is more than 10 years of labor. The problem with many of us why we are not succeeding is that we are led by what the news media is saying, what, what experts are saying. Ladies and gentlemen, what expert can be more knowledgeable than the ancient of days? I don't know what field you are. I don't know what you are doing for a living. But trust me, the one who was there from the beginning is the father of all disciplines. He will tell you what to do when you go to him on a daily basis. Extract a word from his mouth. It is the word of God that you have that you are running with that gives you an advantage, competitive advantage over those who don't have that word. The Bible said concerning the children of Issachar, he said they were men who knew what Israel ought to do and the rest of the nation were at their commandments. Those who know what God wants them to do, others will follow them. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I te can tell you this for free. By the grace of God, I am a player in the marketplace in my country, not just in my country, in a few nations of the world. And I can tell you that as the Lord liveth, if you wait on him to hear from him, you will not be going to where others are walking away from. What I mean is that there was a time in my country that the stock exchange market, there was an explosion, there was a boom in that market. And guess what? Those who went in early made good money. At the time it became a public knowledge and everyone was rushing in. When everyone was rushing in, the market was actually crashing. But when you hear God's word, even when the figures may look right, even when the facts may look right, something within will say, don't touch it. That's the advantage you have, which believers have abandoned. We are waiting for what your friend is saying. We are waiting for what the expert is saying. I thank God for expert opinion. I'm not despising professionalism. But guess what? The best of professional is still foolish in the sight of the Almighty God. Why? The professional doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The second thing quickly I want to tell you. The God factor in your life can become so advantageous if you come to this point of recognizing that without him you can do nothing. You may have all your permutations together. Trust me, I've done businesses in hundreds of millions of my local currency that even translate to millions of dollars that on a good day and it got to a point, sir, that I checked the numbers. When I was going into it, I was so enthusiastic. I wanted it so badly. I'm talking about business that could be as much as seven, eight million dollars. I was so enthusiastic. And after a while, it dawned on me that zero is better than minus ten. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. It would have been better I never went in there. Yes. I wanted it so badly. I thought if I didn't have it, the hell would break loose. But God was trying to frustrate me so that I don't make losses. But I was so adamant. But after a while, I realized that he's still the wisest of all. The love of God, God has given us access to him. So, in John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5, the Bible says, Stay united with me as I will with you. For just as the branch cannot put forth fruit by itself apart from the vine, so you can't bear fruit apart from me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who stay united with me and I with them are the ones who bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can't do a thing. How that believers, especially those of us who play in the marketplace, we understand this. That's why there is no place for sin. Because sin will separate your, your ability to receive divine signals. That's why you cannot afford to be separated from God. That's why you can't play around. That's why you can't touch the accosting. Because the moment you are not united with him, you put yourself in a disadvantaged position that you can't hear him. Even when he's speaking, his voice becomes faint and it is overtaken by the voice of social media and all the news media. And so the question is, brethren, for you to excel in life, you must stay with God. Can I hear your amen? amen. For you to excel in business, it is in your spending time in his presence that he will drop ideas into your heart. It is in your spending time in his presence that he will overwhelm your heart. That the things others don't see, you will see it. Are you following me? I thank God for all the accolades that has been heaped on Nigeria since I got here. But trust me, do you know that yesterday was my first time in your country? The moment I walked in from the airport, I saw a glorious country. 
Can you put your hands together for Kenya? Yeah. Believe me, I am not patronizing you. From your airport, I saw a system that is functional. My country may be big and rich, but it is a whole huge, humongous, disorganized environment. This is not only my country down. But you have a system here that works. But the problem is that the system is working, government seems to be working, but it appears as if the indigenous people are disadvantaged. And so you need to position yourself, you need to position the church. Ladies and gentlemen, as I was coming to meet Pastor Peter in his office, the Lord just dropped in my heart, which is part of what he said here. The Lord dropped in my heart. There is no such nation in the world that is poor. It's just that the people are ignorant. Do you know your weather? I would pay anything for it. I would pay anything to have this kind of weather. That you take for granted. That's why you see a lot of white people around. Do you think they love you? <laughs> they are here because of what you've got. The weather, the soil. Ladies and gentlemen, my desire is that God will ignite a fire that will reposition this church in this nation. Can I hear your amen? And so when you spend time in the presence of God, you become united. And he says, without me, you can do nothing. And trust me, that is the truth. Once upon a time, there was a military coup in my country. I got this message that day, several years ago, in the time of our, one of our presidents, a military leader by name Ibrahim Babangida, one of the toughest guys we ever had. But there was a coup that was organized by Gideon Oka. Technically and professionally, it was the best coup ever put together. <laughs> oh, yes. Even though the coup failed. Now, when it failed, I got curious. I said, God, why did it fail? Because professionally, everything was right. <laughs> but I discovered, when God says yes, no man can say no. Yeah. When God says no, yeah. no man can say yes. I just realized as professionally packaged that coup was, there was a little error. Then there was a telephone line that was not disconnected. The Babagira telephone line was not disconnected. So while the whole nation was in chaos, he was able to get to some Gamzi commanders and let them know I'm still alive. At the moment they knew he was still alive, they had the courage to resist. They had the courage to resist. The, 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 the coup plotters. And I found out, brethren, that no matter what you have put together in the realm of expert calculation, there is a God factor that determines everything. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Can I hear your amen? amen? Time will fail me to talk about creativity, but let me share a few testimonies before I go. In my little journey as a believer, one of the most powerful secrets I've come to realize is that God can only commit himself to himself. I will explain. God can only commit himself to himself. Can you say that with me? What's the meaning of that? Whatever you do, if God cannot see himself in what you do, he's not interested. Are you listening to me? If God cannot see himself in what you do, he's not interested. In other words, the Bible says we are created for his pleasure. If your life don't give him pleasure, he is not obligated to sustain such a life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I found our brethren that God will only commit himself to the life of a man to the extent that man's heart has been tested. 
I found out when he was entering into a great covenant with Abraham. After he had entered covenant with Abraham, Genesis 12, so many, several occasions they met, they agreed. And finally, in Genesis, ladies and gentlemen, Genesis 22 or so, the Bible recorded from 12 to 18, the Bible recorded, God came again and said, I need you to sacrifice your son, your only son, the one you love. And Abraham said, that's okay. You know the story because of time. But the Bible said when Abraham eventually demonstrated beyond any shadow of doubt that he was willing to sacrifice the son. And God turned around and said, sir. He said, don't touch the lad. I have made a provision. He said, but now I know. Everybody say, now I know. The reason why God is not blessing you beyond where you are is because he's not sure where you will go to after the blessing. <laughs> are you listening to me? The reason why you are not at the level that you wish you, are, you should be yeah. is because God has tested you severally. You didn't pass the test. You didn't pass the test. Why are you so afraid to let go or what is in your hand, especially when it is God you are to commit it to. Whatever you can't walk away from will imprison you. Whatever you can let go cannot increase beyond what it is. Are you listening to me? Yes. One of the things that has helped me in my journey, by the grace of God, I've come to a point that it's not too big for me to give to God. You know why? I am at least a little smart enough to know that there was nothing when he started the journey. So if he's asking for it, giving it shouldn't be a problem. Because if he didn't give it to me in the first instance, I probably would have been like any other person. I found out, brethren, that God is looking for those he can trust with resources to fight the kingdom fight. There are things to be done in the kingdom. Africa is overwhelmed with poverty, diseases, and all of that. God is looking for multi-billionaires that can preach the gospel without quoting John 3, 16. Just by sheer charity. I'm telling them. He said, why are you doing this? I am not a politician. I'm not asking for your vote. I just want you to know Jesus loves you. And you are dealing with malaria. You are dealing with all the diseases. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what you say about Bill Gates. I don't see, care about what you say about some of the big donors. But trust me, I have found out that when the needs of men are being met, people don't care what color, what religion you profess. And God is looking for real business people. I do not underestimate the people that are in this room. Why? Because I know God a little. That he can use this short exhortation to stir the heart of somebody to begin to know. If I am born again, I got born again and the spirit of God is in me so that I will demonstrate the grace of him that called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I carry his grace. I am an embodiment of his power and his principles. Men must see me and change their mind about Christ. Men should see me and know a Christian can prosper working within the context of righteous principles. Can I hear your amen? amen. People have asked me this before. Pastor Fred, you are a pastor. And we know Nigeria is very corrupt. How are you able to survive in that environment of corruption? And here is my answer. To the glory of God. I don't have too many clients, but this is what I have going for me. I build relationships. The people that patronize me and give me jobs, they are my friends. I build relationships with them that up to their wives and children, I interact with them. And God has given me wisdom to know when to celebrate them that my conscience can handle that this is not a bribe. 
Even when they have done nothing for me, I have blessed them. And when they occupy position, they don't forget it. The problem with us, like the Bible says, the children of the world is wiser than those that the children of light. I said, beloved of God, my desire for you is that God has put you in one of the finest countries in the world. One of the best. I am not patronizing you. I'm a traveler. I know. You have this weather all around the year. Some people will pay anything for it. Just your weather alone is enough for you to become anything. Depending on your mindset. Because this same weather also can become a, 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 an excuse to be a failure. Are you listening to me? Yes, and so I conclude by saying, brethren, that the will of God for his church is that his people should be repositioned and empowered to establish his reign. Amen. I can hear you. Amen. amen. I am persuaded that by virtue of what is happening here tonight in this room, yes, sir. that you will not only take over Kenya you will take over the surrounding nations. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. So many years ago, about 17 years ago, I had the opportunity to step into America. And as I got to that land, I had a voice that said to me, son, if you get to a place you don't know what to do, what business to do, sow into that land. So I started sowing into the land. I will be invited to preach. I will pay my way. I will give the church money and pay my deeds and give them good seed. I kept doing that. Little did I know how God was going to reward me. At that point, myself and my wife were still believing God for children. About five years, we waited on God for children, five and a half years. And when it was time for God to answer the prayer, just about the time my wife took in, yeah. I realized that I needed to go to the U.S. And a friend of mine said, why don't you ask your wife to come over here to deliver? I said, well, where will she stay? He said, she will stay with us. Long story short, yeah. before I knew it, she was giving the visa. We went. After waiting for five and a half years, delivered the first baby. And immediately after she delivered, two months later she came back home. And not too long thereafter, long story short, in 17 months, we had two children and they are not twins. <laughs> With one entry visa, one visa, two years multiple entry visa, for two years, she had two children that became American citizens. The day we got the passport of those children, the Lord reminded me, when you get to a land you don't know what to do, so into that land. I wanted to buy a house then. I didn't know, I didn't have enough money because to put that cash as a foreigner was a bit tough. To have about 300,000, 400,000 then. But, the Lord said to me, so, in, 90, in 2008, 2009, there was a huge economic crisis in the U.S. Houses that were selling for 500,000, 200,000. Ladies and gentlemen, God started a revolution with me in real estate in the U.S. that in less than two years, I bought 16 houses. In the U.S. I said, what I have come to tell you you can't partner with God and be a failure. It is impossible. Shall we bow our heads to pray? I need you to ask God to use this word to change your story. I've just told you a little about my story. And trust me, this same God is the same yesterday, is the same today, is the same forever. 
Ask him to help you. Ask him to change your story. Ask him to help you help you to see yourself the way he sees you. Ask him to open your eyes to understand your covenant rights and your covenant heritage. Ask him for help. Ask him for help. God, the keyboard, can you just take this song for me? I need you every hour. Where's the musician? sound of my voice tonight can deny that the God factor is an irrelevant one. Because we have seen that the smartest of us cannot be as wise as you are. No matter how much things look put together in the natural, we have come to realize when you say yes, no man can say no. When you say no, no man can say yes. The oracle of your glory that you have given unto us. Because the Bible said the Jews had advantage. Because unto them we are committed the oracles of God. Which is the very word of God. That word can only be obtained from the place of fellowship. From the place of colonia. I ask, oh God, that every man and woman under the sound of my voice will seek your presence. We receive your word from your mouth. And I pray that as you drop your word in their hearts, everything around them, oh God, we go in support of that word, that there will be fulfillment of your counsel. I ask that everyone in this room, you will charge them with your power and anointing. That they will go out there and make a difference. I come against the spirit of timidity. I come against the spirit of premature complacency. And I declare that every one of them will not take their ease in Zion until there is a fulfillment of your counsel. And I declare concerning this nation that the indigenous of this nation will arise from every state of inertia, every state of, you know, of unwise complacency. And they will rise to occupy the positions you have placed for them. And I pray, O oh God, 
that concerning the election, if there be anyone contending with the glory and the purpose of God, if there is any agenda other than the agenda of Jehovah, we overturn that agenda. We ask, oh God, that the people in this room will ignite the fire of revival in this nation, that they will become big time players in the marketplace. As they go there with the spirit of grace, as they go there with favor, as they go there with the anointing that breaks every yoke, I declare they shall become irresistible. I declare that no man can stop them. No man can stop their rising. I ask, oh God, the same grace that took me from absolute nothing, that grace be multiplied in multiple fold, and that grace be imparted upon them. That by the next time I will see these people, they will have eloquent testimonies. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Have you been blessed? Yes. Come on, say it well. Have you been blessed? Yes. Give him a hand. Please give, give God a good hand. This, this is wonderful. You know, I feel jealous now. Already I feel very jealous that uh, I wish I can go and hear him again. This was my first time too, even to meet him. I would like to hear you speak again. I don't know where I can hear you now. I feel jealous like uh, if it was in a church, then I hear more, you know, then I hear more. But we've been blessed. Have you been blessed this evening? Was it a waste of time this evening? No. It wasn't. I'm so glad that we were able to have this great man of God. And uh, we bless him. We bless you, brother. We bless your journeys. We bless your family. And we speak good of your businesses. You know, I don't have any words to say it well. I don't have words. But we pray that may the Lord give you long life. Full of the wisdom of God and uh, that gift of giving. Becoming like Abraham. When God told Abraham, Abraham I'll bless you. And then he said, I'll make thee a blessing. May the Lord make you a blessing. And a blessing is a distributor. May the Lord make him a distributor of blessings. Can you raise up your hands toward him? Raise up your hands toward this man of God. In Jesus' mighty name. And oil, lay hand on him there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless this great man of God. We say yes. Everybody say yes. yes. Come on, shout yes. yes. It is done. It is well with him. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to sing the heavenly